Good. Welcome. Welcome to Amuna is our future. Yes, we're with uh, an opportunity to have a good eye. A good eye. How we look at this. How we look at each other. How we view what we're doing. How we view each the whole world. How our mindset. How our heart processes things. And how we act with our realities. We've been talking a lot about this thought, speech, and action. Unity inspires projects. This is my brand. <laughs> and Amuna is our future together with Rav Shalom Orish Shlita. This is his beautiful studio, which, thank God, we've already had two wonderful classes. QA in English with the Rav. We're very excited. It's amazing. Just going to get my uh, sanitizer. Very important. Keep reminding ourselves about all the important rules of what's needed. And we're going to go into a class today that is very, very much needed for our generation. Yes. Is basically looking good. Looking good at people, looking good at yourself even. You know, there's many famous sayings about having an eye in tava, a good eye, which is what it means in Hebrew. And to look good, to have a good kick, a good kick, as they say in Yiddish, a good blick, how you look at things, your outlook, your shkafa, the mindset, as Gary V, Gary Venichuk, a famous Jewish successful entrepreneur, says that mindset is everything. It's everything. So your mind, how you process stuff, how you work through stuff, is so connected to your success, your, the way you process your relationships, your work, your everything, your learning, your spirituality, it affects every aspect. As we said, it's the mind, the heart, and how you process things. You know, I was just working through the halachas, the laws of tefillin with my son, and because he's going to be bar mitzvah, please God, just before Hanukkah, process in life, that it's a journey for all of us to be able to keep this uplifted, mindset that no matter what's going down just before Mashiach comes is going to be a little bit more challenge it's going to get a little bit more labor deck like a bit more of a of a dynamic process for all of us so we have the opportunity all of us to join together and to not give up to not miyash you know right now the why life i went down on the youtube but the good news is we have Baruch Hashem, we have a nice edited version it's going to come out we have our audio here with the Brothers of Israel podcast. We have the Facebook, which, thank God, is working very smoothly. And we have even Instagram Live on one of my channels. And please, God, we'll have, as time goes on, a more professional setup like we have by the Rav, with all the cameras. You know, we'll be patient with that coming together. But it's a whole process to get to where we need to go to, to get the information of Amuna is our future, to understand in a foundational way that our mindset and how we think about ourselves is very much connected to where we put our eyes. And it affects our heart level, as it says, that we, wherever we look with our eyes, that we shouldn't go after them. We shouldn't just let our eyes wander around. We should have some self-control. As Stephen Covey very famously said in his Seven Habits book, something which people in the business world, thank God, have read, and hopefully we're going to have a good influence till now, even though it was a while ago. But he said that self-restraint is the key to happiness. And it's still a life feed from him. He's not here physically. But we see that people have lived legacy. And there's no bigger legacy than in the last week we just commemorated Lubavitch Rebbe's legacy. It's a big, big legacy for us to f- try and go in his way. Lubavitch Rebbe, Menachem Mendel Schneerson, Ben Levi Yitzhak, he was the site was just this past, past uh, Erev Shabbos. And we had the opportunity to really tune in to what it means to be involved with someone who's so who was so dynamic at getting everybody motivated and, and channeled, empowering people to become leaders, and not just himself to be a leader, but to be able to constantly turn people into leaders, like we saw by Rabbi Sachs, yeah? uh, the chief rabbi, the former chief rabbi of England, how his journey to become a chief rabbi and all the amazing things he's accomplishing and still, please God, will continue to accomplish. It was all in the merit of the, the Babacha Rebbe, giving him that understanding that he can be a mashpir, that he can be a leader, can someone influence. So it says with the right eye, the Bible Shrebe had that good eye. He saw within him potential to do more than he saw within himself. 
And this is the same with everything we're going to talk about today's class, about the power of all of us, how we, you guys are viewing me now. You know, you can have your judgments, your opinions, but in the end, it's all irrelevant because in the end, you can't have a true effect on a, on a soul and on a shama. Even though people are worried about and hoya yeah blian hoya bo Hashem Hashem should save us from that, but the main thing is that if we're in a certain mindset of of soul of oneness of unification of amuna, if we're in that world of self belief, someone asks, "What is amuna?" They'll ask on the last video. But please God, we're going to have the Q and A here with Rav Orish, and we've got a special guest. Very excited, Shlomo Katz. I don't know. You guys didn't reach out as much as I'd hoped. In terms of, uh, I mean, you did with questions, Baruch Hashem, and you did, but you didn't like throw me a whole list of guests you'd like to have. So thankfully, I reached out myself because that night, Shlomo Cat sent me a video of his latest song, and I was very excited to see it on my WhatsApp feed because I suddenly thought to myself, why not invite him? And please, God, a week later from last last class, which was amazing because we went through such important things, we were able to organize and bring him. Please, God, here tomorrow night, eleven o'clock. You guys should tune in. And it's really important that we have these opportunities. Why? Because he's another person, another example in our generation, a very, very positive eye, very positive outlook. His music, his energy, his soul. This is the kind of mindset that we are working at in our Muna team and our Breads of Israel sites to try to generate a lot of positivity. And even personally, like I've seen, unfortunately, the last week or two, a lot of like, you know, we've seen in the world generally, but also even personally, there's like a, a lot of it's nagged, there's a lot of like a resistance to doing something positive, if, not from anyone like that I have to really like be, you know, so concerned about, but just in the aspect of people not judging positively and giving us opportunity to all grow in our own way and see the hand of Hashem in how people, Baruch Hashem, they should, everyone should have what they need. So, you know, obviously there's maybe a little bit of jealousy, maybe, I don't know, maybe, you know, we all have it inside of us a little bit. You know, if we would understand, like, you know, really the right mindset is to have that we want everyone to be matzliach. We want everyone to be successful. Everyone around you to have success, to have joy, to have shalom bias, to have peace and harmony in the home, to have beautiful children and families and have a good sphere of influence, to use the internet with a success, to be able to have people posting positive feedback. You know, one of the things I've done in this week's question and answer for Ravosh is not only did I put the questions, but every song I put a little bit of feedback because thank God it's positive. You guys are saying nice things and that means a lot to us. It gives us a lot of encouragement and it helps us go ahead to continue sharing these Amuna classes with you in a Baruch Hashem in our beautiful, ho- in our beautiful studio in Yushalayim, in Kodesh, in the Holy Jerusalem. What an amazing thing that we have the idea of living in Jerusalem. You know, I once had the merit to hear a beautiful idea, the why of the place Tiberi Tiberius. Tiberius. It's not so far up north. It's the place of the Canaret. It's, it's a beautiful place to go to, to Tovel. You know, personally, I haven't actually been to Mikvah for a few months. I feel embarrassed if we get to give a class on Torah without having the opportunity to be in a Mikvah. There is such a halacha. You can use the shower and have then kabim, and that's hopefully has the purifying effect. But just to talk about Tiberia, hopefully we'll have a purifying effect. Talk about Siddiquim, to, to learn ideas of Amuna, to have Avis as well, to love other Jews. This is a big ticking of this three weeks coming up because the three weeks is a time where, God forbid, there was a lot of sinas chinam, there was a lot of hatred that caused the Chorban, that caused the Vodah Zorah with the lack of communication to each other, that caused the fact that there was an Engel Zav that caused a downfall during these three weeks when we have a time of mourning, a time of pain, God forbid. And that whole idea of this pain and, God forbid, with the second wave of coronavirus, the corona challenge is still continuing. This is coming our way. How do we go into these next three weeks with Pasha's Balak with the right ice mindset. You know, Balak only had, they said he only had one eye. Yeah? And it says by Yosef Asali. He was above the eye. This one eye, this, this evil eye. So it says in the Pekavis, he has an iron raw. He had a bad eye. But Avram Avinu and we're all descendants and our light, the Osha Avram, the light of Amuna. That's all about Avram Avinu's light. He was a mamin. He was a, a, a person who over Hashem. He loved Hashem and he shared Amuna with the world. That was the voter of Avram Avinu. So that's the Ayin Tova. That's the good eye. That's the way we should look at people, as it says in Pirkavos. Another thing it says by Pirkavos, Ayin Tova, to look good at people is very one of the five aspects of five Talmidim of Yochanan ben Zaka. We have different students, different ideas of, of how to have a good heart, to have a good neighbor, all different ways to, to how to act and be. And the most important one is the, is the Lev Tov, is to have a good heart. Once again, we say that the way you look and the way you 
feel about things are very connected, the way you look at things, what you're looking for. So right now with the internet, Hashem Shemaynu, Hashem should protect us and clear, purify us. As we're in a war, we're in a challenge. Every time we go online, if we don't have the full filtered or whatever the situation, we haven't filtered our hearts yet, then we're going to have that challenge. There's going to be pop-ups, it's going to be this, going to be that. And we're going to have to control our eyes. And that includes everybody, not just men. It's a, it's a universal challenge for everyone because the way you look at things affects your mindset, affects your feelings. So if you're looking all the time at all these people looking so rich or so fantastic and looking so stunning, you know, and then they makes you feel a little bit, you know, less. And then you feel like, oh my God, you know, like everyone in the world seems to be having an amazing time, even during Corona. So much, you know, like, and I don't. And then a person feels bad about himself. Instead of, like, we spoke about last, last week, feeling good, focusing on the good, saying the shovel, turning it around, for this is good. Using this time, this Tamas and Av, these two difficult months, to turn around with the right mindset. You know, one of the things we spoke about last week was the idea of the Shema Vaya. And thank God there's a very special rabbi, Rabbi Biederman. We mentioned him a few times with uh, Eli Melech Biederman. Yes, he's a good guy, very holy rabbi. I mentioned say a guy, a holy rabbi in our generation, putting out beautiful Torah. And he says this beautiful idea of the connection of what I spoke about last week. For those who followed, and we recommend you always go back and go over the classes because there's a lot going on within the 20 minutes or so. We have Zayn Shavali. What was this Pasuk? That this is not worth anything to me. That's the Pasuk of Tamas. The last four letters are the name of God's name, we're just going over the ideas, and those four letters are backwards. So he said a beautiful idea. Take the yud, that's the back last part of li, za'ina shava li, the the hay and the vav and the hay and the yud, and that yud at the end, take that yud that's gone all the way down to the backward part and bringing down judgment into it, take it and bring it back and put it back up on top. Move the yud back and you've got yud k vav k. What's all this about? It's just the mindset, the way you look at things, that the yud should be on top, the yud should have the yud, the, the yud is connected to the yud. That idea, the mindset should be in a positive place and that would turn all the judgments into rachamim, into kindness, into chesed. And that's something which everyone can do just by constantly allowing yourself to regenerate the positive mindset. And that's with Hashem's help. Hashem himself wants us to be, he wants us to have a good mindset. If duets Hashem Basimcha, he wants us to serve Hashem Basimcha. As we said in the capital, in the Psalm 100, we know that that's the Kuf, the Psalm Kuf, the hundred to heal him. They have the idea of this if duets Hashem Basimcha. The, the, the Rav Arish is talking about it. I told the Rebbe, my Rebbe in Yushalayim is talking about every all the good tzaddikim, the good righteous people talking about this idea of serving Hashem with joy. Even during such a time, that is the key. We have to keep positive. And the way we look at things, our mindset, our good eye will make a big difference. Like we said before, Lubavitcher, we can empower people around us. I remember hearing from other tzaddikim, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, the Rav Rosh Shiva in, in, in America, all around different thoughts. We said the Ton the Rebbe with Tiberius. What's Tiberius got to do with a good eye? It's the same idea as Tuvria, says says the Talmud Rebbe based on a Tosfus in Megillah it's a beautiful in the Talmud we have to learn the Talmud in the Talmud it says a beautiful idea that Tiberius is the same letters as Tavria having a good eye and that's why the people there says in the Gemara they weren't empty why because by looking good on people you have the power to empower them to give them the strength to go ahead in their life to have the power to do what they need to do with all their struggles and all their pain and to have the inner strength, as we spoke about a few weeks back, to have the inner strength to overcome whatever's stopping you, to have that win-win mindset, to have that strength and that energy. And that is very important that when you're around righteous people, that's one of the things by just tuning in, please God, we'll try to do a Zoom chat at some point. It would be nice if Ravosh can start to, you know, speak to some of the people out there. we we'll maybe do some Zoom chat interviews, maybe Zoom chat meetings. Well, just like when we come to Chizaz, he, the Rav himself, can sit with you guys and talk and you can see. And just by having the way he looks at you, Ravosh, he's able to see the good. This is the idea of a sadik, a righteous person. He's constantly focusing on the Nukudas Tovas, on the positive and strengthening that aspect by the way he looks at you the way he speaks to you and obviously the way he feels about you he feels he sees your potential and he empowers you to live your potential i mean think about it for our generation with education with hinoch we're bringing up children i know myself and i've caught myself many times sometimes we're not feeling so great about our children unfortunately they're playing up a little bit just relax a moment <laughs> a little bit of mindfulness over here just they you know it's getting a little bit testing you know like it's uh a little bit challenging sometimes with the children. So what's the 
the right way of the right mindset, the right approach. The right approach would be to see the good in them, to really pray for the good, to empower them, to constantly go together with them and give, the, uh, give that loving feeling that they're beloved no matter what. And then they have the power within to do their shlichas, to do their agency of good. And all of us have that ability. Every single person yeah, has the power to draw out the good in the people around them where you work, where yeah, well, online, to say comment nicely, to give feedback, encouragement. You can give these loves and these hearts and all these caring and all these other things that social media hopefully gives us in a good way. We have to draw out the good of social media also. So that's another important thing that we have to remember that we're on a you know tight schedule. I only personally get to speak once a week, 20 minutes or so. And you know I'm happy with that. I do have my podcast, which I've invited to many times, Unity Flow podcast, which right now we've been posting Rav Orish's beautiful question and answer. I feel like he's covering a lot of ground and we need to go over it again, as long with our Brothers of Israel, when is our future podcast. And then we have the other podcast, thank God, which is a relationship flow. And I feel like there's a lot of jewels there of relationship because to be able to have that shalom bias, that peace and harmony, we have to see the good. We have to focus in the good. Last week we spoke about not, not feeling waste, not feeling like useless, God forbid, like feeling the having the ability to see the truth of who we are that we have a soul and we're worth something seeing our value our true value our self-esteem our self-worth and this we were talking about now that once we're doing that then hopefully we'll start to look at other people with that kind of mindset and it can get challenging like i said with the kids that i think they have personally they have the best testing abilities because you know we were all kids once and maybe we weren't as crazy as the previous generation i mean so there we are we our previous generation wasn't as crazy as this generation and you know maybe they were <laughs> i don't know you know in some ways i was pretty crazy as a kid i didn't grow up religious or you know so bound by you know halacha or toira so i didn't really know about those things so you know there was other things going down you know like people when i i've been joining some of these you know zoom chat meetings to get to know some different people around and around and they, one of the questions is, say something about people that they don't know about you. So I'm not going to say in this, in this uh, you know, you have to come join me on one of those Zoom chat things. But basically, you know, there's always some personal things that we've been involved with. You know, like, we're not proud of, but it's a secret that, you know, I see my journey. I'm proud of the journey that I've come from such a place to where I'm at like now. And just, you know, like we've been speaking about with Saving This and Black or other people that have come here, their journey is very inspirational. So in my own way, you know, I wasn't, you know, like in that you know like situation as much but in my own way i had had a journey towards this spiritual uplifted mindset that i'm working on and that good mindset that positive heart and that wish this is the important part success on others this is Pasha's balak that even balak he hated us he wanted to destroy us and what happened hashem turned Klalas into brochas. My son, he was born this week, 16 years ago. Baruch Yitzhak, we called him. Baruch Hu. He was the idea of turning the challenges of our generation into the ace of into a, into a Yaakov, into a brocha, into Baruch, into a blessing. That the Yitzhak's blessing should come out for brocha and the 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 klalas, the curses that. What's his name? That Balak and Bilam wanted to give to us. Yeah, Bilam with the one eye. They wanted to give to us. Turn it around to Brocha. And that's the obviously that comes out during this time, just before the three weeks, to remind us. Even the people in the, in the rest of the world will be reading Balak soon, please God. And we'll all be joining together with this idea of turning the curse into a blessing. That is the key for our generation. Turning the coronavirus into a blessing. Turning all the econo- econo- whatever, economic challenges into a blessing. Even our speech, turn it into a blessing. To all our hearts, turn it into good, into positive, into chizuk, into encouragement. And that's something which all of us can do by just switching a little bit. Our minds, like we said, taking that yud that seems to be all the way down there, that godly spark, and bringing it back up to the truth that we have a soul. It was never really gone it was always there and present in everything we're going through we have a godly spark within a godly soul and that was the power of the Babich Rebbe he looked at everyone with that Rav Oresh himself came through Lubavitch at the initial stages there was also the Sefer of Espolidus and, and the Sefer upon him office he was working with there are those two aspects of, the, of talking to Hashem he was already busy with that just like Nissan Black spoke about but he was also the Lubavitch there was a uh, we're going to, maybe we'd love to have him come here. I mean, that's a, another uh, guess that's a good idea. But he had the one of the famous, famous mashpiim now, um, Rav Yitzhak, uh, what's his name? Please remind me. God, send me the name. I forgot that for a second. But he had a very special uh, uh, person who, a Galenai, the, 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 he's the uh, owner of Galenai. He's someone who's brought a lot of inspiration. You guys can remind me at the bottom somewhere, or maybe I'll post it under, after the class. 
But we'd love to have him come. He was a teacher of Rav at the beginning stage from Chabad. And the idea of giving that inspiration to people out there, that they should feel that they have the ability to turn this color where we have to wear these masks and have this thing and be worried, you know, schools are closed and all the problems and people are going. And my parents in London are Ginsburg. Oh, thank you, Yitzhak Ginsburg. Amazing. Someone is listening. Thank you so much. He made my day. So Yitzhak Ginsburg, he was, he's one of the Rabbonim who, who's inspiring and changing. And my parents, in the other way, they're sitting in London and they're, you know, over, way over 60, 70. And it's hard. You know, they're, they're stuck. And they can go a little bit to the park and see maybe a few kids. But it, people are like, you know, we're making it simple. We'd love the grandparents to be here. You know, people are, for, I'll give you a story, quick story. Yeah, let's get a story out before we finish today's class of encouragement. And it's connected totally into Baruch Hashem to the Rav Oresh's Q&A. Maybe we'll mention it again there as well in English. But someone left a voice message on my phone. Their names will remain anonymous. But the main point was there was a Kala and she was very, very worried. A bride about to get married. How is she going to get married during the corona with the family and everything and wedding hall and the wedding hall she wanted. It wasn't available because of all the balagan, all the craziness that's going on right now. She was very, very upset. You know, she was crying, talking, to, but then she's heard Rav Oresh's teachings about saying Toda, thank you Hashem, and there's also thank God, there's lots of our friends called thank you Hashem, there's organizations, this idea of being a, a law, a law of gratitude and the power to bring miracles through that, she was thanking Hashem, thanking Hashem, and accepting it, the idea that Gedalia Fence talks about letting go, and just that ability to just go with the flow, and that was that power that generated a miracle, what was that? One, the wedding was booked, when? In the hall? that she realizes even better than the one she originally wanted and was upset about. And not only that, she then realized the day of her wedding is the day that finally they'd undone the restrictions and she could have a wedding without worrying about it being illegal or any, any issues with the police or the administration. And she was able to make simcha on that day, wherever she is, because I will keep the facts anonymous. And it was a big simcha. She sent us a message through people who connect to Ravarish. I'm very excited. And this is the thousands and thousands of stories. Just by saying thank you, Hashem, by having that good eye to the situation, you're thinking, wow, it looks so dark, so difficult. Now I'm going to have a good eye. I'm going to say thank you, Hashem. There's good here. There's good. I'm an Ayn Tava. There's good in the people around me. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to look at the right things, not the, God forbid, you know, one of the things we need to mention before we end is the idea of Shemir Sanayim. We have to look, use our eyes. I was listening to Alan, Rabbi Alan Anava. He's got some challenge going on, 40-day thing. And it's very important there. You hear about the Shemir Sanayim for our generation to work on our holiness and how guard our eyes to not just be wherever and not to have our energy channeled to things that's not, not for us to be channeling it. Only towards the right place and the right time or the right person and realizing that energy is godly, is souls, is power. And it's if a person contains it within and does everything like we said from Stephen Covey, can self-constraint, brings that inner joy by controlling yourself. That in itself is a tremendous success in our generation and should give us a lot of encouragement. So that not only do we have a control eye but we have a positive eye just like with the speech we should control how we speak we should say positive things to people and we should act positively we should do more kindness and less judgment we want to get angry god forbid we should take that anger and use it for positive so that all the negativity turns around to positivity all the challenges we're going through right now because there is underneath a deeper deeper essence of good in everything going on within every person there's a godly spark otherwise they wouldn't exist that's the truth of ain odd mavado there's nothing else but hashem that oneness that unity the unification we've spoken about there's nothing else but hashem so if we understand that the next three weeks these next 22 days that we're going to go on this journey really this idea of 22 connected 21 or there's a temp there's an extra day because of the temp of our but basically 21 days officially the three weeks so then we have the idea of 42 as journeys we'll talk about it please god and we did last year and we gave it a muna class around this time thank god we have last year's classes for this time period you can go back all the way i think it was a muna future with our journeys and go back all these classes please god we're putting up we've got the wish series from ravel god we've got daily halakhic corner we still need to reach out again to reviant and to get back some english classes from him please god we'll start putting out some more gadalia fenster we're going to keep things moving 
moving. We're going to have Shlomo Katz here tomorrow night with a guitar and with the positive energy and with that unity between other groups, other people out there. We want other people to come here. Like we said, Yitzhak Ginsburg, Chabad. We want everybody to be involved in Amunah's our future. It's about, it's ultimately, it's all with Amunah that we're all together on this journey. Everyone in the world, the whole universe is together on this journey through this world and we need everybody. So if anyone has any ideas about this, how to build this and expand it, to share it, to develop, send it to me. We have my email always below. Send me your questions for tomorrow night and for our weekly class, please God. And keep joining us here. Strengthen our energy together that we should feel good about what we're doing together in these classes and we should speak good about the classes and we should share the classes, be active and getting the internet to a good place so that all the 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 whatever called the viral content or the stuff that's doing very like streaming very strong should be spiritual should be uplifting thank god there is you have to i personally set up my internet that it should be filled with his all the podcasts filled with inspiration filled with positive words in my mind so that i'm constantly with a good mindset i'm hearing from good people like gary venichuk said we started off with mindset is everything so think good the way we look at things and please god will be zocha with all these different ideas that we talked about today, to please God to see the three weeks turn around to days of joy, and we should dance with Mashiach Sekenu and all the Jewish people in the world with Mashiach Sekenu, and the completion of this world should be the next few weeks should be turned into only good times, and I'm looking forward to see us all together in Yushalayim, Yerukadosh, Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Please share on.